It's been a while since I looked at LaTeX. Uh, and as such, uh, looking at developing books, you know, this the idea of this DevOps as the thread running through, and then the others being the detail underneath. Uh, one of the things I want to develop in this documentation set is uh, a centralized index across all of it because there's so much crossover. So using LaTeX should allow me to do that. It might require a bit of post-processing though or, or processing within the build system. Um, LaTeX has its own uh, version of make uh, yeah it's it his own specialized version of, of make um, which is useful because it, it makes sure that it builds several times which is often necessary with LaTeX files <clears throat> for reasons that we'll come to uh, now it has been quite a long time since I've used LaTeX and Anger uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all uh, do some tests uh, to show how this might work. Uh, now one of the issues uh, is that I want to decompose these books down. Uh, putting a whole book in one file, although it's appealing in some respects, is also a pain in the arse in others because LaTeX can take a while uh, to process these files. Um, so to reduce the amount of time it spends actually rebuilding the files, it's convenient to, for example, just build one chapter of a book at a time. Um, the downside to that is that it can then become costly. Uh, there are many ways of doing this. Um, but the one I'm going to use is, uh, I think, is an approach called subfiles, which is a, a package. Um, okay, it's worth describing. Uh, okay, it's, it's worth taking a step back. Okay, let's take a look at LaTeX itself. Uh, LaTeX, uh, in fact, let's, uh, is it worth drawing diagrams? Probably. Uh, let's, let's switch over to the uh, document camera. Okay, uh, so LaTeX. Uh, actually sits on top of tech okay so tech is um, a typesetting system uh, it's actually a, a, a Turing complete language so it's a it's a full language but it's it's specific domain is typesetting so you 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 produce a tech file which goes uh, into tech to be processed and out of that comes usually a DVI file. Now, there are specialized tools which will then take that and produce like a PDF. Uh, and in actual fact, there is a thing called, uh, no, we'll, we'll come on to that. So, so that's tech. Um, but tech, <clears throat> powerful though it is, is also, uh, it also has a, a reputation, a deserved reputation, for being a bit of a dog's breakfast uh, and a pain to learn. So, a chap called Leslie Lamport came along and said, look, I can simplify this. And what he did was he wrote a load of macros uh, that go over the top of it, which he called LaTeX or LaTeX. Okay. And what LaTeX is, in essence, it's a preprocessor which takes all of this, uh, which takes a, a LaTeX file, which is a specially formatted tech file, basically. Okay. And it's a whole, there's a whole load of macros uh, defined, uh, which then get reduced down to tech and fed into the tech processor and output as whatever. Uh, so LaTeX simplifies somewhat uh, the use of tech. Um, so you get uh, a LaTeX file uh, consists of a whole load of um, specific markup. So you get things like this. You get something like 
Okay, I want this to be emphasized. Okay, so I can like emphasize yeah, strong curly braces, all right? Uh, and now strong would come out as bold or italics, depending on how you how your emphasis was defined in your in your setup. Okay. If you wanted to be specific, you could say something like text BF. Okay, and you put that inside the brackets like this. And strong. And now strong comes out as bold font. Okay. Uh, so you know um your text gets marked up like this um now it might seem well that seems like an awfully long winded way of doing stuff and that is true but you can also define your own macros so for example you can define a macro called command and in there you could put you know uh all your bash commands so cd dot dot okay so command might do nothing special uh in general but in certain contexts, it could put it out as a monotype font. A monotype font. Uh, in another in other case, it might put it out as uh, courier bold you know, or something like that. <clears throat> uh, so, but the point is that you can redefine how command comes out and how command comes out. If you're used to dealing with CSS, uh, you might have had something like this: span class equals command uh, cd dot dot span okay and you know you understand that, that by redefining command uh, the class command in your um cascade style sheet uh, that you can change the way this cd appears exactly the same thing in latex Except LaTeX been around longer. <laughs> so LaTeX useful for for that kind of stuff. Um, it can also be used uh, uh, for again for uh, structural elements. So uh, you could do something like um, begin itemized uh, itemize. Uh, item there, there, item there, there, and itemize. Okay, and now you've got an itemized list with the various options. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of that. Now, <clears throat> there are two things that we need to uh, appreciate. The first one is the way a document, a, uh, a document's appearance, uh, that is uh, very roughly uh, the equivalent of cascade style sheets. It's not really, but kind of. Uh, if you had uh, a site-wide cascade style sheet, let's put it that way, okay? That is the equivalent of a class file. Uh, within LaTeX. Uh, however, if you then had a style sheet which just dictated certain things about the style you're using, uh, so, so for example, let's say I had a Salty Vagrant website site CSS. Okay, and that was to be applied to everything on the site. And that gave me the the basic layout of my website, the basic colors defined, you know, uh, the basic structure of a page, that kind of stuff. Uh, and all that's in there. Um, but on one particular page, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to treat a table in a special way. Okay, I might have another one called, you know, special table dot CSS. Uh, uh, and that would change the style of tables just and anything that included that special table CSS they would have this uh, specially formatted table okay uh, now that the equivalent of that kind of thing is a package uh, within um, later yeah uh, they are broadly speaking the same thing but they're used in different ways so when i start a document in latex 
uh, I say document. Okay, and then uh, I, I want to specify uh, the the document class. Okay, so uh, let's just go over here and uh, if I do LaTeX basic example. Mm. All right, here we go. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is what I'm interested in. Okay, so here is my document class. In this case, oh, let's, let's blow that up a bit. Um, right, so in this case, uh, it's uh, article. Uh, come on, a bit, a bit more. There we go. Uh, so it's uh, it's an article. Uh, so that's my document class. Okay. Uh, and then you can see here, we then go on to use a package called Graphics or Graphic X. Okay, uh, and Graphic X provides various uh, macros for describing graphics. Uh, but the basic layout of this document is defined uh, by this class article. Uh, so you can think of article as equivalent to uh, as equivalent to uh, the site CS, okay. And you can think of uh, graphic X as being uh, the equivalent of uh, using this special package down here. In other words, it gets added to. Uh, now, uh, packages can actually do an awful lot of stuff. Um, you know, they dictate more, more than CSS does. Uh, it, but, uh, you know, it can be used to do a lot of manipulation of the underlying document if you are so inclined. Uh, but going back to this example, uh, which is, as it says, is a simple example. Uh, although, having said that, uh, having the graphics in there makes it a bit more complicated. Uh, when you say begin document, uh, then you're actually beginning to uh, put information in about the document. Uh, now, title and author, uh, these are roughly uh, like putting the title of the author in the header of an HTML document. Okay, yeah. They may or may not uh, be used subsequently to uh, display this information. So. Uh, in actual fact, title and author really just set values uh, for the title and the author. And then when you call this make title macro, that actually lays out a whole page, or in the case of an article, lays out the header, which has got the author and title on the article layer. Uh, then you've got, these are called environments between begin and end. Uh, in this case, an abstract. So when you're writing a, a paper, uh, you have the abstract at the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> then we declare, well, okay, uh, everything after this is the introduction section. And then there's a paragraph of text. Then we've got another environment. In this case, it's an equation. Uh, we've given it a label. Now that label is just a point of reference. It's kind of like an anchor. Uh, and this is the actual equation. Uh, and this is where uh, LaTeX is really very good is on, on math. Okay, so alpha is the actual Greek letter alpha. Square root will be translated into uh, a square root symbol. And the square root symbol will lay over this beta. Uh, now you'll notice that section this one is a subsection. Uh, so you can think of section as being heading one and subsection as being heading two, uh, which is a, a subheading. Uh, then we've got the figure uh, and this include graphics. This is where the graphics X package comes in. Uh, so uh, this center will be set, uh, this figure will be centered on the page. Uh, it will bring in this graphic. Uh, it will be three inches wide. 
Uh, and that is a reference to the file that is going to be included. Uh, we're going to give it a caption, which will appear at the top of the bomb, depending on the particular style, uh, which is defined in, uh, I think it's defined in GraphicX actually, uh, but it might be defined in article. Uh, then we give the figure a label again, so that we can reference it if we wanted to. Now we're back up to a section heading, so we've gone up one level of heading. And then we tell it, right, this is the end of the document, and that marks the end of the document for LaTeX processing. Uh, so if we go to over here, uh, let's, uh, let's create a completely new... Uh, so if we go over here... And, uh, um, go into the class room uh, okay so if I uh, do um, let's do example dot and I'm just going to take everything in here. Now I've already installed LaTeX and I'm not going to go through installing it because it's easy enough to find information about that. Uh, and uh, let's. Uh, Uh, let's just move some of this stuff back. Oops. Need me to do that. Okay, so there's our file. Um, uh, right, so uh, of course we don't have that figure in there, so let's uh, 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 let's uh, make a figure. In fact, let's copy So let's call it. Uh, actually, let's make our lives easier. Mm. Uh, right. Uh, 
Uh, it's probably expecting a JPEG, no, my luck. Uh, let's just try making that explicitly a ping file. I must admit, I thought it dealt with pings. Uh, No bounding box. Uh, okay, let's try something else, shall we? Uh, do I have anything in here which isn't a bloody thing? Um, SVG, no, that's any good. Uh, oh, confused, there you go, confused band.jpg, and I'll do. Across to my figure dot jpg. Uh, And did it again. Well, again, show it. You have to do me homework on this. And oh, oh a little bit further. Mm. It's, it's done it again. Can't determine the size. Okay, life's too short. Uh, all I wanted to do was demonstrate a basic, uh, a basic document. There we go. Uh, so. Right, so that's now written out to DVI, but if I use PDF LaTeX, uh, it should write out a PDF. Uh, and uh, now, where are we desktop to? There we go. So there's our document. In all, in all this glory. So you can see uh, that uh, title and author uh, has been set. Okay, so over here, if I go back to, oops, uh, I should really have done that in the background. Let's, uh, right. Uh, Uh, right, so this title and author, so you notice in the title uh, we've got this uh, we've got this LaTeX here. Uh, that is actually uh, rendered in this special format here. Uh, which is the official way of writing LaTeX in a properly typeset document. Uh, you see author's name has been output uh, underneath it. So all of this uh, uh, here, uh, all this section, uh, and this space up here, has all been dictated by this make title command. Uh, uh, and the contents of it were defined uh, by uh, these two lines here. Uh, okay, the, the date was defined. Oops. Uh, the def the date was defined elsewhere uh, as part of this make title. Uh, right, then you've got abstract this environment here, uh, which go back to. Uh, 
uh, you've got the abstract okay so it inserted this title and wrote the abstract text you can see that it's been indented and in fact there, if there was a lot of text in here you'd see that it was a, a block of text uh, so there's that but then you've got a level one heading some text then you've got your this is the uh, equation environment right so again there's more to this than meets the eye uh, it's just unintent those. okay so first of all equations are by default numbered okay so you can see uh, there's this number on the on the end here used to reference it and alpha and beta are rendered as the greek letters and the square root symbol goes over the beta uh, and this is all like that as math uh, then you've got the subsection 1.1 which again is numbered by default uh, the margins and everything are, uh, and the page numbering are all defined by uh, this document class uh, now just to illustrate the point we could do uh, beta insert backslash uh, I should think there's a gamma so if I do that and then rerun PDF LaTeX uh, and then open that up so, uh, let's reload that so now you can see we've got beta and gamma yeah so and you can see that it's, it's, it's extended the square root symbol over the top of it and um, that's because uh, we put the gamma inside the brackets so these brackets define the scope of that square root if I took the gamma outside it uh, uh, come on Mark wake up uh, if I go here and uh, delete that word and then add it in uh, add it in uh, you don't need the space in there but let's put it in there to be obvious okay and then re-render it and then we can say yes uh, and now uh, the gamma actually falls outside okay enough 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 you get the general idea uh, so that's at its core is, is LaTeX. Now what we want to do is, uh, now you can see all these other files that appear. Uh, you've got the AUX file, uh, a DVI file, which is generated. We've got a log file. We've got, uh, well that's it in this case, because we don't have any index or any bibliographies or anything like that. But you can generate an awful lot of cruft. Uh, all, these, the, all these additional files a AUX file for example and a log file <coughs> are written out uh, while it's doing all this processing here uh, in fact uh, this is the is the log uh, and you can see it's fairly detailed you know, so it tells you this is PDF tech version blah 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 uh, let me see uh, enter in extended mode it's, it's processing example dot text uh, this is uh, the version of LaTeX, uh, LaTeX 2E, uh, and then, uh, okay, so here you can see it's loading the article class, okay, uh, standard document class, uh, uh, it's loading a load of other standard uh, installed as part of the distribution of LaTeX. Uh, now it's producing this or processing these auxiliary files. The auxiliary file contains all sorts of stuff. Uh, so LaTeX uh, works in several passes normally. So uh, yeah, the first pass might do things like um, uh, uh, pick out um, 
uh, cross references and things like that well the problem is although it can pick them out it can't say which page they're on until it's actually typeset those pages so if you're forward referencing particularly uh, what it has to do is it has to effectively uh, so let's say you're forward referencing a page number so you're saying you know see blah 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 on page 10 uh, and that entry is on page 3 well the thing is you don't know it's going to be page 10 until it's finished typesetting the document so it has to uh, write out um, a, a marker somewhere to say that this needs to be filled in after the fact then it needs to render uh, typeset all of the document uh, and then it needs to go and look for those markers and say right okay that marker is now on page 10 so I can fill in look on page 10 uh, now doing that of course might then cause it to be knocked out of wax slightly so it might have to go through a second pass so it, it might have to go through several iterations in order to get the document rendered correctly now you might be thinking to yourself this is all an awful lot of work I know and this seems like a very long winded way of doing things you know why can't I you know, why can't it do it the way a browser does it well uh, actually browsers do it the way this does it now uh, that's precisely why you see some websites will, will load stuff and then you'll see stuff jumping around as the cascade style sheet is loaded and it, the browser will then realize oh actually this thing can't fit there it needs to be moved slightly mm -hmm. which is why if you look at um, uh, you know best practices uh, it says things like when you define your images you should define the, the size of the image as part of your cascade style sheets because uh, not doing so uh, means that there's a possibility of it jumping around as the actual image is loaded and it turns out to be a different size unless you've actually coerced it to a particular size it can cause it to jump around so the same thing goes with um, typesetting with latex uh, you know some things will change position latex very good at for example working out hyphenation and doing microscopic changes to the width of letters uh, and it does this very intelligently because uh, it, it knows how close letters can go before they become visually unappealing uh, now back in the 70s when all this stuff was do a girl for latex uh, word processors uh, like word and so on were dog shit uh, by comparison you know they were basically glorified typewriters um, so latex was the only game in town uh, as far as uh, high quality uh, typeset documents were concerned and the DVI format uh, similarly was the only game in town really for viewing them on graphical screens uh, things have moved on obviously in the last 50 years <laughs> but LaTeX remains uh, a very sound uh, system uh, it's, it's a very sound uh, way of writing large form documents and in fact it's one of the reasons why I started using LaTeX many many years ago uh, although like I said it's been a few years since I used it in anger um, was because I got absolutely pissed off to the back teeth of, of Microsoft Word for example uh, screwing everything up uh, it, it was a nightmare if you had large documents and lots of indexing the number of times it would screw up the, you know like you go in and the document numbering would all be screwed up or if you had a mass document with many uh, sub documents that you were pulling in uh, that it was just too easy for them to end up looking like a complete dog's breakfast and after you've done this a few times with, with large form documents you begin to get fed up with it so I started looking at alternatives uh, and originally I looked at um, oh what was it it was uh, was it, it was in design it wasn't in design um, but it was it was a dot books tool and uh, the name's gone now uh, and it was great uh, it was very sophisticated uh, and it used um, uh, a document marker uh, uh, and it was it was terrific uh, but it was also a eye-wateringly expensive I think my copy of it was about a thousand pound at the time 
what the hell was the name? Frame Maker. Uh, Frame Maker. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it was close to a thousand pounds, somewhere about there, for for a copy. Uh, so it wasn't really very practical uh, uh, for the sort of thing that we're doing here. Uh, but then I discovered, uh, largely by accident, I discovered um, tech and latex, and oh, what a blessing uh, because you could now typeset programmatically uh, because like i said they're basically a pro it's basically a programming language mixed in with a basic markup language so you can pretty much do anything you want uh, and just leave the system to sort it out now that said it can still be a bit of a mess sometimes you know it can be there are sometimes very intractable things going on um, uh, that leave you scratching your eyes out and wondering why the bloody hell you went wrong in your life but on the whole it's uh it's well worth learning right okay enough waffle uh let's uh remove all this stuff now then so what i'm going to do is uh, let's make a couple of uh, so let's call it book one and book two uh, uh, and uh so we've got two books uh, which should be enough for us to experiment with uh, now i'm not going to do the all at the moment because i know that that's going to be a bit of a dog's breakfast so let's go into um, book one uh, now there are two things uh, i am going to want my own class eventually uh, but for now, I think I'll ignore that problem because all it really means is that uh, if I do uh, a main.tech uh, and I can create, uh, remember back here, okay, we have this basic format, okay, and the basic format is uh, uh, document class to tell it what shape our document is going to be. And we're going to use a class called memoir as our basic class. Now, Ultimately, I'm going to call it like the Salty Vagrant Book Class or something at uh, SV Book or something like that. And I'm going to use the memoir as the basis for my class. Why do that? Well, because I may very well want to tweak and tailor certain things about memoir. I'm rather than doing it every single time in this area here, okay, which is called the preamble, so the bit after the document class, but before we do the beginning of the document is the preamble okay so down here we're going to do begin document which is where the actual actual document begins uh, okay uh, and if we do oops, end document there uh, so that's the actual uh, that's the actual document there uh, yes, it would be if I hadn't like a thing. So uh, there we go. Uh, so this is where your your actual document is going to appear between these two. Everything between document class and here is called the preamble. And preamble is where you would do a lot of the customization and things like that. Uh, but uh, I don't want to have to redo that every single time in order to define. Uh, what is going to be the standard formatting for my document so rather than do that i can do two things i can first of all i can have one of these main text files uh, or main text files which is going to pull in uh, the various parts of my document book uh, the advantage of doing it this way is that the actual structure of the book remains the same uh, but the preamble and the class can change very easily uh, i'll show you what i mean uh, if i in here okay so instead of uh, putting my actual document in there i'm going to pull in i'm going to do an input now all input does is input says find this file and just read it in as if i typed it in here okay so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that uh, the structure okay and that means I can have a structure document down here 
Okay, and this structure document is going to define the structure. So I'm going to have, uh, let's say, chapter. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to include. Uh, and include is very similar to input, except uh, include puts in a full page break um, before then reading in the rest of the document. Uh, and I can do uh, chapter. And so I can say right. Okay, I'm going to inst. Uh, I'm going to break this up into chapters. Okay, so chapter one. Uh, let's call it zero one. So it sorts properly. Uh, and a, I can say. Oops. Uh, I can have another main document in there. Uh, so I can do main. So, Uh, and I can then have, say, chapter two. And then I can have chapter one slash main dot tech. But this is not going to be the main as such. It's going to be uh, chapter. Uh, Chapter heading, chapter mm, title, uh, and then I could break it down further. I, I could have actual section documents. Uh, so uh, I'm not going uh, just for now because uh, there are other things. Uh, first section. Uh, and then some text, uh, and that'll do. Uh, uh, can't work for writing. Why on earth not? Oh, because I haven't created chapter one. Uh, uh, my directory chapter. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm also going to write that out to chapter two. Okay, so they're both the same. Uh, uh, let's take that. Let's do PDF and text on my main document. Let's see what we get. Uh, no file chapter zero main dot tech dot tech oh classic mistake uh, yeah, i forgot you don't need uh you don't need especially if i take on that all right cool uh, so now if i do um And uh, I mean, it doesn't mean it's not it's not meaningful. What we've got here. Uh, of course, we've got two chapter ones. But the important point is, we've got chapter one, blah blah blah, and then we've got chapter two. Uh, but it's got the same title and the same section, but it is chapter two. Okay. Yeah. So that's our basic um, document, and the nice thing about it is it's all been decomposed into these uh, chapters. Okay, now uh, going back up, uh, I could of course do exactly the same thing for book two. In fact, I'm going to let's remove the directory book two. And then do a recursive copy of book one uh, as into book two. Right, so book two is identical to book one at the moment. Uh, so let's think about some of the things I might want to do. Going back into book one. Uh, okay. Uh, 
So far, so good. I've got uh, the main document. Uh, I'll, I'll tidy this up because, of course, I don't want all the, all the cruft to appear in this directory as well. So I've got the main.txt. Now, the main.txt is actually defining, uh, let's call it the book form. So let's uh, move main.tech and call it book.tech. Because uh, really, what book.tech is defining is just the layout as I want it to be for a book. The basic structure in structure.tech just defines chapters and sections and things. Yeah, uh, so if I go to the structure, it's just defining what the high level structure of the thing is. Yeah? Now, I might keep it like that, or, uh, you know, I might, for example, um, put in, uh, you know, include, and then uh, we could break it down here as chapter one, uh, section one. Okay, so that would mean that we would have a section one document and we would reference it from here. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to go into the chapter directory and in here uh, we can take main.txt. Now you'll notice that main.txt doesn't have any preamble on it at the moment, okay? But we could take this section here, okay? And instead of doing that, we could have uh, uh, something like input uh, section one. Yeah. Or whatever it could. I mean, you could have the actual title. It doesn't matter. Okay, uh, and then uh, uh, where 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 am I? Where am I? Uh, uh, right. So I'm in chapter one. So if I spit out uh, actually, if I make directory section. Actually, no, I can, I can do it. I can illustrate my point from here. Uh, uh, let's do split section one. Uh, okay, and uh, I can basically take, uh, let's take that whole thing out and put it into here. Uh, and theoretically, if I can now go back up to book one level again and redo the PDF LaTeX, nothing, you'd hope nothing changed, but now we've got a problem. Uh, it can't find main.tech, oh, that's fair enough, because uh, we want book.tech. There we go. You can see here. Uh, section one dot tech is not found, right? And that was in uh, main dot tech chapter one main dot tech. And the reason is uh, uh, the reason is that the directory here uh, is not relative to this document. It's relative to the root. So I would have to put. Uh, Chapter 01 slash section 01. And then uh, 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 oh, hmm. Uh, okay, so now it works. Uh, well, that takes away somewhat from the flexibility of my system. Um, what I really want is I want the chapter to be more or less self contained. Now, I do know uh, that there is a thing called subfile. Uh, and another one called import. So, 
So the subfile package allows us to uh, do, effectively do kind of import, um, but with with an added feature, and that is that I can build because if I go into um, chapter, uh, I go into chapter one here and try to build main, the problem is. It's broken. It it won't work, and the reason is because it's got no um, it's got no preamble. It's got no document class defined. Okay, so uh, so. Uh, what I really want is I want to be able to go in and, like I said, I want to be able to build these chapters separately because as the book grows, um, rebuilding the book every time I want to just check something or I want to type read it, uh, a proofread it or anything like that, uh, it, it's it's a monumental pain. I want to be able to just build the individual chapter. So that's where subfile comes in. Uh, the other package which is the LaTeX uh, import package. Okay, what this allows me to do is use um, a relative uh, path names uh, and have them resolved correctly. Okay, and so the combination of those two should allow me to do what I want. So let's, first of all, uh, let's get this subfile working. So you can see in the main document, uh, I want to use the package subfiles, uh, uh, and uh, then um, I can then uh, invoke uh, uh, the sub document. So okay, so what does that mean in real terms? What it means is that in uh, the book tech. Uh, uh, file. Okay, I've got document class memoir, and now I want to use package subfiles. Okay, and now instead of uh, in in the, uh, I still want to in, uh, uh, input structure. Yeah, because structure is just uh, an abstraction. Uh, but if I take uh, Structure. Now, instead of doing an include here, I want to do a subfile. I think. Uh, yeah, subfile. Okay. And I might as well do the same here. Okay. Now there's a gotcha because you, you now the subfiles now have to be treated specially. Okay. So now. What I need to do is go to chapter one main. Okay, and you can see here what I need to do here is I need to start this with a document class. Uh, and the document class is uh, subfile, uh, but it needs a parameter. Parameters are in square brackets. Okay. And it's the name of the main file. Now then, uh, this actually leaves me with an interesting issue. Uh, okay. Let's, uh, so it's dot dot slash books dot text. Okay. Uh, and it is class sub file yeah subfiles plural uh, and now I treat this as a document uh, as a document so begin document now the, the trick here is that the uh, the subfiles handler We'll strip these out. Okay, so what will happen is if I try to process this now, the, the, this file on its own, this main text for chapter one, okay, what it will do is it will go to this file 
the book tech one level up it will get the preamble from there not the not the actual document so I'll ignore the document I'll get the preamble and it will make that the preamble for this document and then it will take everything between the begin and end document and it will treat that as the document to be processed so in other words this document will get all of the preamble from the main document and it will then uh, construct a, a document from it okay so uh, uh, now, uh, it does raise the issue that uh, I've got the same problem with chapter two uh, that this needs to be converted as well otherwise it's going to choke uh, so document class uh, dot tech uh, begin document and end uh, document okay so now if i if i process the main book file again uh, and of course it's not called the main kind it looks wrong with my fingers today uh, uh, control D, Control D, Control, control D. There we go. Right. So everything seems to have worked. I've got three pages out as I expected. So if I go over here and uh, 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 let's, sorry, let's run that skim again. Uh, on PDF. Okay, so okay, so there's our chapter one and our chapter two. So we've, we've got our two chapters as we expected. That's copacetic. So now, uh, so now, um, what I want to do now is go to chapter one. And just try processing that separately. Uh, so uh, I want to process the main dot tech here. Okay, so PDF LaTeX main dot tech. Uh, just to remind you, though, uh, if I look at that main dot tech, uh, it's it's the one which is the uh, subfiles heading. Yeah, but if I process that. Uh, right now then uh, here we go uh, chapter one section one not found okay so uh, it's uh, cars uh, what well, I should have said of course is section one now this is going to raise an interesting point uh, okay so Okay, so that produces correctly. And now the top level one for book won't. Oh, I tell a lie. No. I remember now. Uh, Subfiles will use import by default. Uh, so we don't have to use the import package directly. Uh, Subfiles will do that for us. So whenever it sees a relative path, it assumes you mean relative to the file in which it is contained. So that's cool. Uh, so going back to chapter one. Oops. Okay, we now have a, a main uh, PDF in here. Uh, and that is just for the chapter. Okay, so that is just chapter one. And see it's just it's the only page so we've we've processed chapter one you can see that the format and layout and everything is exactly the same but we've just processed it as a standalone document mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if we go to uh, 
if we go to let's just um, let's try that again shall we uh, I just want to make sure that yeah okay so you can see uh, that uh, uh, that's interesting uh, I'm not quite sure oops uh, yeah bear with me a second uh, right okay so yeah so we can see this is chapter one and we've just got the uh, the one page okay right so if I now go back to chapter two uh, uh, and just make sure that the, uh, the main tech in here uh, okay so again it's referring back up to book tech and uh, right this one doesn't have any structure in it okay so there's nothing there's nothing clever going on here so if I do the PDF LaTeX in here for chapter two Uh, uh, so again, uh, I can do the uh, skim for the main file again, and uh, ah, now that's interesting. Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, so here you can see it's called Chapter One, yeah, even though it's actually Chapter Two. Uh, uh, so it's in it's in chapter two, uh, but it's called chapter one, and the reason for that is that uh, the counter, the, the chapter counter, of course, has been reset to one. So it's always going to be chapter one because it's always going to be the first one. It's the only one being processed. Uh, so how do I know that it's correct? Well, uh, there's a simple way for us to prove that it's right. Uh, if I do. Uh, if I change this to be um, okay. and reprocess it, and then we open it. Okay, and this is purely because uh, these these numbers are obviously assigned by latex and they're done by internal counters uh, but since this is the first chapter the, the processing at this level in counters is going to be called chapter one even though you can see it's actually the chapter two title which is coming out Hello. so uh, hopefully that's sufficiently confusing that everybody's now sitting around going Whoa. now it did raise an interesting point though and that is um, we're probably going to want to uh, instead of calling this main.tech call it book.tech again and we're probably going to want to do the same trick of having the uh of, the, of having the structure separate <coughs> uh, to the tech file for the same reason now, if i wanted to for example uh although in this case maybe not because eventually we're going to use this ht latex Okay, and HT LaTeX uh, is going to convert it to hypertext. Okay, so if I do uh, HT LaTeX main.tag. Now this does uh, several passes, but importantly, the, the important thing it does is it first converts the file to a DVI using standard tech uh, and LaTeX. Okay, then it creates the HTML. Right? Um, and so you can see here we've now got the cascade style tree and we've got the main html uh, along with a load of other craft of course and you can see it did an awful lot of um, processing but if we open up this main html in a browser uh, so in order to get that uh, we will need uh, this so we may we may not need that sectioning to the same extent 
So you can see, yeah, uh, at the moment, I mean, there's a lot of work to be done. <laughs> but you can see we've got chapter one, chapter one title, first section, da da da. Yeah? Uh, so an awful lot of work for something that looks like crap at the moment. Uh, but uh, it does prove the point, and that is that we can process it. Because uh, if we've got, uh, we've got a whole load of stuff being done for us, uh, we've got a style sheet. Uh, which is yeah, defining a lot of styles that we're not using at the moment. So you can see we've got chapter headings and all sorts of things. Yeah, so we can do something a bit more substantial if we go to the top level. Uh, so if we go to uh, dot dot and we do uh, HD LaTeX uh, book. Uh, and, uh, it looks like we're probably we're probably okay. Uh, and here we can go up here and go to oops. book HTML. Uh, uh, we don't have new source, come on, Mark. Uh, right, so now uh, it's all coming out as a single file. Uh, and there are various options that we can apply uh, to get it to come out as chapter one, chapter two, and so on. So, yeah. Uh, the advantage of splitting things out at, at the lower levels into chapters with structure is the same as with uh, at the book level. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Uh, so uh, let's copy uh, book.tech to the article.tech. Uh, okay, so now I'm just going to change this to article, uh, and then uh, ah, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, chapter is defined in memoir, uh, and it's not defined in. Uh, article. So let me just uh, 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 article dot tech. Now then, uh, uh, let's do latex define command. Yeah. Now we don't want an environment, those are the ones that appear between begin and end. Right. We want the actual command. And so this is the way you do it here. Yeah. Alright, so what we're going to do is we want to create a new command. Chapter. Uh, and we want to define it as being nothing. Uh, so we do, don't, don't want to do anything with it. Uh, so, right, so now we've got the article written out. So let's do article PDF. And now you can see this is now output it in the article layout. Now because we redefined chapter to do nothing, it's just output it as ordinary text. 
Yeah. Uh, and here's our sections. Sections one and two, as defined uh, by our structure document. So uh, that gives you kind of the idea of where we're going with this. That the, the the book format is just something that we're going to wrap around it and we could apply any other kind of format now it could be for example that we would want to although uh, processing the book format straight into html uh, seems to work uh, we may want to actually define a different class to be processed into our website uh, and that might do more work with some of the commands uh, so is that something we want to consider well mm, yeah probably not i probably i probably don't want to be bothered with that i think chapters is far enough down to go with a sub uh, uh and if chapters are far enough to go down with the sub files uh, i think for the sake of consistency each of the chapters really ought to instead of being called main ought to be called book just so they map uh, yeah so that it doesn't look weird um, so if we uh, move main tech uh, to book tech uh, at least then it's all consistent uh, we need to obviously do something about uh, all the crap that this outputs uh, uh, but that, that's just a question of uh, specifying the command to write them out somewhere else. Uh, the other thing is uh, whether or not, because uh, here you can see I'm just inputting the section uh, in, uh, whether that needs to be um, a structure document like the top level or indeed whether the top level needs to be that structure diagram uh, that structure because uh, if i go up one level yeah there's an argument for uh, uh let's get rid of article because we don't really need that anymore uh, and uh, we can get rid of main Uh, and we want to get rid of everything except for the tech document uh, and we've got tech put as well Ooh, nice. okay so i want to remove uh, uh, This will be some very clever way of doing this. And actually, okay. remove can only take a very simple uh, globs. So we would need to, and we could do it with a find, can't we? Uh, we can do find uh, book dot star. Because we want to exclude. Um, hmm. Okay, I mean, I can think of several ways of doing it, like using grep minus V, but Linux remove files based on reject.
Yeah, I mean, they've basically done what I would have done. Uh, part D3, grip. Because uh, because then you can do like this. Uh, you can do grip, uh, uh, but you want to be minus v. Uh, actually, if we do ls book dot star and then grip star dot tick. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, Oh, okay, so there's always something a bit different. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, if I want that to be the expression and want to expand to files, ah. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm missing something obvious then. We can just do it. Oh yes, yes, that's the point was you know, before I got sidetracked. Uh, using this to divorce the structure from the document 
it's not strictly necessary, is it? Because uh, uh, those subfiles could be put inside that document without any cost at the moment. And if it turned out uh, sometime in the future I wanted to separate them out, it would be easy enough to cut and paste them all and uh, put them into a separate structure document. So eh, debatable whether to have that complexity in there or not. Um, so I think we'll keep it simple for now. Uh, and of course we have to change those to be chapter one book. Uh, okay. So the next challenge then is, uh, first of all, we want to put this all back the way we found it. Uh, mm. Interesting. Okay, so I do need to going to expand that. Hmm, I don't want it to be recursive. Uh, How come that's working now? I'll give up. Right. What was I doing earlier then? That caused it to balk. Uh. Oh! Okay, if you open with a single quote and close with a double quote, you're going to have problems. You're going to have a bad day. Okay, so that was just me being a dipshit. Uh, but actually, uh, that gives me everything that I want to remove, uh, and I can then pipe that into Xarx. Uh, now then. Uh, Uh, if I just do this, then it, it would be potentially problematic. Uh, it, it wouldn't be, I don't think, in this context, because uh, the line isn't going to get long enough. Uh, so that's done what I want. But if, if you had a lot of matches, then that would be problematic, and you'd probably want to do that. 
which would then run RM multiple times once for each line of output. So, uh, or not, uh, is it not D? Uh, what's the equivalent? Uh, Ooh, okay, I'd have to I'd have to check. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, right, but uh, what we want to do is actually break uh, uh, Hmm. Okay, this particular version of Xarx uh, doesn't let you do it. Because what you really want to do is uh, break on every return character so that Xarx doesn't take uh, oh, Having said that Any arcs specified on the command line are given to utility upon each invocation, otherwise uh, some number read of uh, the arguments read from the standard input. Uh, placing one or more occurrences of Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, we could do minus L1. Okay, so that's the way you would do it. Okay, so you would actually say minus L1 on this system, uh, which would then call RM for each each line of the output. If you don't do that, then you get one remove command with a big long line, which is not problematic per se. Uh, uh, don't want to remove that, no. not yet. Okay, so we've got, uh, uh, we've got our basic structure. So now, uh, now I can reference between books using the standard sort of bibliographic references, which is fine, but it would be nicer if I could do it directly. Now there is an XR utility for doing external references, but I'm not sure how it works. So uh, if we uh, get up to one. Uh, So chapter one, uh, if I change that chapter or add to that chapter a label of chapter test. Okay, uh, actually we might as well just for proof of concept. Uh, let's uh, y 
chapter two. Uh, uh, C ref chapter test. Uh, I believe actually uh, we could call that page ref or we could call it actually interesting problem. Uh, right. Uh, okay. Uh, now then. PDF LaTeX book. Aha. Uh -huh. I thought I'd left it. Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh -huh. Structure tech is there. Structure dot tech not found. Interesting. Uh, that's processing book. Uh, all right, let's be explicit. Well, it might be saying that structure.tech has not been found. Oh. Hmm.
Mm, that raises an interesting question, doesn't it? Now you've got an undefined reference, and that's never going to be defined in this chapter. Because it's a reference to the other chapter, but uh, that just means you'll end up with a question mark. Which I suppose is okay. Uh, this is still giving me a brain ache. Uh, you know, why can't it find structured tech all of a sudden? Why is it suddenly getting pissy about that? Structure dot Nothing's changed. Can't see why that is a problem. The file structure dot tech not found. And yet, uh, that's weird because when you just say continue, it goes on and it loads chapter two main. It suggests. Um, that was a very misleading, wasn't it? That was a very misleading error. Um, okay, I get it. All right, so you can see the first pass. Yeah. Okay, so that was a very misleading error. It wasn't structure.tech it couldn't find, it was the file within structure.tech it couldn't find. Uh, it was actually uh, the chapter one book, because we'd renamed it. Now you'll notice that uh, here it says this chapter test is undefined. And remember I said that sometimes you have to run LaTeX through several iterations? This is one of those cases. So you can see the second time it was run, Everything was fine. So uh, when it was writing, uh, so you can see here, uh, it's uh, yeah. So okay, so we're in book. Uh, we're generating the book auxiliary. We've read structure tech, and now we're in book 
deck and now we're in chapter zero so one okay and we've now got this error uh, so if we look at uh, book orcs uh, you can see all sorts of things being defined here one of which is this label chapter test uh, and you can see that this is the reference uh, so it's a title of reference uh, to chapter one uh, so that got written uh, so now I should be able to do uh, .pdf and uh, right so there's chapter one and there's chapter two and there oops and hopefully it just says C1 but that is referring back to chapter 1 because that was what the reference was uh, so it's C1 chapter 1 uh, now we can make it more obvious by changing it to for example chapter chapter reference or whatever uh, but in principle you can see how the reference works so that works with intra book so the question now is if I wanted to refer to chapter one in book one from chapter two how could I do that now uh, I believe there is a package called external references so if I go to book two uh, okay and uh, now I'm going to go into chapter one uh, and in here uh, uh, I'm going to say uh, external reference uh, and we're going to reference uh, chap test now obviously we can't see that because uh, that doesn't exist anywhere inside book 2 but if I go in here and I put in here use package uh, and I use the package external reference whoops uh, now well, I've never used this before so uh, let's check out the LaTeX external reference package and package documentation. Okay, so uh, here we go. One document needs to refer to the section in another say X, then this package can maybe loaded in the main file and the external document. Okay, so uh, in the preamble, so uh, external document. Uh, now then, uh, I might need to use no I shouldn't need to use relative import book two uh, sorry book, uh, uh, book now do I need to specify I oh, know tech seems to be the default so if I just do that and then Uh, okay, 
Okay, so if I now do that. Okay. There it is, external reference one. So we have to be a bit more careful uh, about the way we do the external references, because of course external reference one doesn't make much sense out of context. Uh, so either, now it will get that external reference there, probably from the book auxiliary file, uh, which had already been built. Because uh, I'm guessing uh, that what it does, if, if that hadn't already been built, then we would have got, well, there is no reference there. Uh, let's try it. Uh, let's just go back here and go back to uh, book one. Okay, and remove the auxiliary file. And then go back to uh, go back to book two. Redo that PDF LaTeX. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Let's, let's be clear, and because it might be that it's defined in main.org. No. Okay. Cool. Uh, so let's do the PDF LaTeX again now. See what happens. Right, here we go. Uh, no file book.org. Uh, label is not imported. So we would have to uh, rebuild uh, uh, book one in order to get an auxiliary file that it could then read the reference from. Yeah. So we get a warning. Uh, that we would need to rebuild the external. But it's a very simple beast. Uh, so you'd have to then build book one. Now, if you had, of course, references from book one back to book two, you'd get the same warning. Uh, but we have written a main PDF. So what we should find is that uh, we just get a question mark. Uh, yeah, so you can see it's it's filled in with question marks, the external ref reference, <laughs> uh, and basically saying that there was no label in there. Yeah. Um, so we would have to rebuild book one which would then say what the label should read. Then we would rebuild book two and we'd get this. Now you can see that if book one referenced book two, you'd have this problem. So what you'd end up having to do is build book one. That would warn you that there was no book two. And you'd build book two, which would build its auxiliary file, but give you a, uh, but would read the auxiliary file from book one. So it would be okay. Then you go, go back to book one and rebuild that to fill in the references from book two. So uh, you can see that if you have built a whole series of books, uh, then you're probably going to end up having to build most of them twice if there's a lot of cross-referencing between them. Uh, the other thing that's worth doing is, uh, you'll notice here that there's also uh, external citation document. Uh, uh, we can resolve the problem that uh, we might have conflicts. So, for example, chapter test might be defined in book two and book one. Uh, so, to disambiguate them, uh, you can put these fake prefixes on. Uh, so that's not a bad idea. Uh, the other thing 
we really want to do. Mm. Mm. Is uh, we would probably want to actually define uh, external reference. Uh, and the external reference would take the title uh, by which you refer to it, or all your labels would have to have a book title associated with them, which I think in memoir you can do. There is a book counter anyway. Uh, but the point is that there is a way of doing this. So the next thing is the Uber index. Yeah. Now doing indexes uh, is not that much of a problem uh, in itself. Uh, let's go back to uh, book one. So to do an index, uh, you have to uh, run a, an external program called make index, uh, but, but within uh, LaTeX. Uh, so if we do LaTeX make, I think it's make IDX. Uh, there we go, create an index. Okay, so you can see here that uh, you just put index markers in, that's easy enough. Uh, but you want the make IDX package. So uh, within uh, the book, uh, uh, within the book, okay, we want to use package uh, make IDX, okay, uh, and then uh, uh, again inside the preamble. Uh, we do make index okay and now if we now uh, chapter one uh, oops, uh, chapter one uh, book okay uh, so uh, 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 something to index backslash index index entry okay uh, so this is going to be the world's simplest uh, uh, the world's simplest index okay so what but the, and this is important now uh, we would uh, in structure okay uh, we would do say back matter uh, make uh, sorry print index. Now then, we are not going to get an index. Uh, uh, so you can see here uh, undefined references, and now the references are being filled in. But if we go and have a look at actually PDF LaTeX might uh, might actually run make index. So uh, so you can see here it's written the index file book IDX. Which if we look at it, you can see index entry, which has got the name of the index entry as we opened it and the page on which it appeared. Uh, so if I now uh, because I'm uh, because I'm doing this with um, PDF LaTeX, it may be that PDF LaTeX is actually uh, doing the job, but I don't think it does. It's... Okay, so what we've got here is chapter one. You see, there's no mention of index, and this is where the index should be, uh, but there's nothing. Okay, and that's because uh, what this doesn't do is it doesn't run. Now I think it's called make index on here. 
Okay. Da, 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 da. Uh, scanning the input of standard in. Nope, we don't want to do that. Uh, so we want to do make index for book dot idx. Okay, so now we've got this book index file, which if we now do the PDF LaTeX, okay, the print should have uh, create, uh, printed our index and. Uh, so now you can see we've got chapter one, chapter two, ta da, and our index, and our index entry, page one. So, uh, and this is what I mean by sometimes you have to do several passes. Okay, um, now there is a short way of doing this by using uh, a make file, but it's obvious from the format of this um, okay that this index entry uh, and page number contains no information about which book it's come from that's fine just out of interest uh, let's say uh, What if you do that? Uh, and there is a reason for me doing this. Okay. Uh -huh. As you just duplicate in the index, we now get what I hoped, which is we get this. Uh, index entry and then we get it's on page one and on page two now the reason I hope that is because what it means is if I've got an index for book one and an index for book two I can just put those two together now the question is does this make index ah look at that I can put up as many files as I like Nice. Okay. So in actual fact, uh, I can take that index file. Uh, and let's say I had book one and book two index files. Uh, and an index entry. One. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to quibble about the page numbering at the moment. Uh, uh, let's say uh, I've mentioned on page 10. Uh, now, can I put anything I like in there? Uh, let's say book 2 dash. Okay, uh, so I could do that. Now, can I do make index? Uh, book .idx and books .idx. Right. So now we'll do the PDF later again. And then do. Uh, so what have we got now? So now our index boom your index entry one and then book two ten. Uh, is that right? I thought we had one and two for the first one. Oh, wait a second, I, I regenerated it, didn't I? Yeah, I regenerated it directly. That's okay. Right, so I can in fact uh, add in uh, specific book references as well. 
another way of doing it is for each of the books to start in a different place. Don't want to do that. So for the master index, uh, I could do it that way. Uh, I could do it with sub entries. Uh, so the index entry might be divided up into books one and books two entries. Uh, but I think this way is probably the easiest and then oh, having a key uh, to which book perhaps to which entry. You don't want to put the titles in every single one. Mm -hmm. So definitely doable. Now is there a way to do that using make index? Uh, the program made to impose hierarchy of index generator accepts one or two input paths. Oh, I have to text format. Uh, uh, index. Oh, uh, three levels. Uh, the way in which words are flagged for indexing in the main document. Uh, does not automate the process of selecting these words. No. Okay. Uh, uh, complementary to the orc based make index system. Or oh, so the input and output are specified in a star file. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, hmm. Letter ordering. Uh, employ in as an output index file. So the start page number of the output index file. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, so I suppose it's possible we could use an index style to specify it. Uh, uh, I don't see set page prefix. Mm -hmm. Well, there's probably something we can do with it. Okay, uh, so yeah, we can either do it that way, and I think that's the preferred way of doing a sort of global index. Uh, rather than, you know, doing a bibliographic reference, uh, which we will do to external documents that are outside our control. Now, remaining questions. Uh, oh, here we are, it's way past your dinner time, mate, sorry. Um, we're going to get you some dinner in a second. Uh, so the next thing is uh, to deal with hyper referencing. Now there is a hyper reference package which will let us link within a PDF, for example, and will undoubtedly work for the HTML. Uh, but then. Does it deal with external references and HTML and links? How do they how are they dealt with? That's a question for tomorrow. Right, come on, mister, let's get you something to eat. <laughs>